Well, welcome. Welcome to you who are far away, and welcome to you who are here. We are few and far between today. Folks, um, you that are far are many more than we who are near. Welcome to the boys and the girls, those who see themselves as good and those who see themselves as bad. Welcome to friends and strangers. Welcome to all. Here we are worshiping inside, following a bulletin and slides we prepared for outside. In here, we are not led by River's End, not their sweet sounds this day, but by the organ. We help protect one another by speaking rather than singing, and some of the songs will be exchanged for others. It's sort of a flexible day. I hope you can go with it. Some we will hear the music and the words spoken, so please bear with us. Today we worship as we listen to hear what God speaks to us in his word. We begin as we rise to confess our sinfulness and receive God's forgiveness and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. So this first hymn, we are going to speak. And if we don't stay right with the organ, that's fine. We're just going to speak these words of praise. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And remember, we're speaking. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And speaking on, but when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my song, my Savior God to thee, 
How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, then take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. It sure is hard to speak it and not sing it, isn't it? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us dis as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I invite you to be seated as we hear the children's message. All right. Am I far enough away to take my mask off? Because I really want to take my mask off for this. Uh, well, one of the things that have really been affected by this pandemic is sports. And I don't know about you guys, but at our house, sports is something we spend a lot of time talking about and thinking about, and we've been doing this for years. I mean, I got my Cornell hat, I got my Roxbury Hot Shots t-shirt, which if I had a dollar for every Hot Shots game I went to, I would be doing a lot better than I'm doing now. I got my Lehigh mug. We've got all kinds of sports that Bob wore his Rutgers shirt today. I don't know if anybody else has a team shirt on. But sports are really important. And they can really get intense sometimes. We get very into who our sports, our team is. And boy, sometimes we've gotten really nasty about other teams. But you know, the thing about it is we forget about sports a week later and it's just on to the next, to the next game. But God doesn't really have teams. Hmm. To God, everything is, everybody is on the same team. Uh, if Jesus was going to help somebody, it didn't matter what town he or she came from. It didn't matter the neighborhood. It didn't matter what school. It didn't matter what church. If a person asked for help, Jesus always responded with to, and helped that person. Um, and God wants us to do that too. And sometimes we really have to be reminded about that. Uh, and I don't know if anybody was listening to Pastor Jay just a minute ago, because the prayer for today is all about that. Uh, and I think we should just pray that prayer of the day again, all together. Uh, it's not up there, so you have to look in your bulletin if you're here. Um, okay, let us pray. 
God of all people, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call on you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, you may not understand all of those words, but just remember, we are all on God's team. Amen. first reading on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Isaiah, 56th chapter. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. <clears throat> their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. Here ends the reading. We're going to speak the words of the hymn together that introduces the song. We can remain seated. <clears throat> and then we'll read the song alternatively, or alternately, some word like that. And Scott was all ready to sing <laughs> the line of that song, and now he can't do it because we're inside. Love the rain. Ah, so. <laughs> merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon the earth, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. second reading is from the book of Romans, 11th chapter. Paul writes, I ask, then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. 
For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he, be made, so that he may be merciful to all. Here ends the reading. We stand to receive God's word in the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came up and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Do you, like me, feel more than a little bit uncomfortable when you hear this story? I mean, we just heard Isaiah speak God's command that it is God's intent to bring foreigners to God's holy mountain and make them joyful in God's house of prayer. That God's house is a house of prayer for all people. Yet here's Jesus seeming hmm, not exactly friendly as he responds to, to this woman's plea. He is, dare we say, downright human in the way he reacts to her as an outsider. It's the way we humans are, isn't it? It's only expedient, sort of, to put people into categories. It starts with noticing the ways folks are like us or different from us. But because of fear, it doesn't stay there, does it? The current times are a perfect illustration. To stay safe, we keep others, and to keep others safe in the pandemic, in my family, we have created our family bubble. Doug and I, our son, his wife, and our grandsons, and the other grandparents of our grandsons, constitute a group designated as safe. We greet each other without masks. We visit one another's homes. We eat together. We even hug. And I expect you have bubbles, too. We may have other categories that have other rules of engagement, people we deem safe enough to approach, but not for hugs. This kind of category, categorizing, is health-producing. There are other kinds of categories that also start out as safety-motivated, but they don't stay there. For example, if you are a woman walking alone, whom do you feel safe approaching? 
Other women, perhaps? Men you recognize? What about women or men who are shabbily dressed? What about people of another race? Who do you feel comfortable talking to about politics? My brother-in-law? People who post on social media about one party or another? It's so easy for these seemingly safe or dangerous categories to become good and bad categories. It's so easy for them to evolve into, you deserve respect, but I don't think you do. You deserve my help, but not you. Even Jesus in today's story from Matthew 15 operates this very way when the Canaanite woman approaches him. We Israelites are God's chosen, God's beloved, gifted by the Almighty. But you, Gentiles, you deserve nothing. You we treat like dogs. It's human to draw lines, to pick sides, to stereotype all Canaanites in one bundle, to see all women as shrill and silly and selfish, to see all men as brutal and cruel, to expect all black people to be a threat, to fear all whites as a threat. Folks, it goes on and on. What started out as a shortcut way of dealing with others in the world, categorizing them and basing our expectations on those categories, has developed into a, I'm going to say it, blasphemous, ugly web of lies from which we cannot free ourselves. Do you hear the echo there from the confession we made earlier? We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves, we said. We're captive to our assumptions about others and we cannot free ourselves. Today's lessons, though, seem bent on taking this human shortcut and rubbing our noses in it. From the earliest times of scripture, through prophets and apostles and Jesus himself, God has been pointing out how human it is to categorize and how God's way and the way God intends for the world to work is something completely other. And so today, let's look at all the appointed lessons and what they have to say about how God would have us treat one another. Each of them says pretty directly, God welcomes all. God does not weigh or sort us based on political parties, ethnicity, or even gender, and definitely not teams. When it comes to insiders and outsiders, God is clear, as Paul wrote in Romans 3, for there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All are sinful, and all are welcome. In the Isaiah reading, we heard that the thing that joins us to God, to be God's people, is not your race, but that you are his servants, loving the Lord and abiding by his covenant. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Isaiah points to the foundational truth that God's blessings, God's welcome, spills over the boundaries that we humans have set. Ah, but for me, the psalm, it's the text that really says it deep in my bones. Did you hear it as we read it this morning? You would have heard it even better if Scott had been allowed to sing. I can just hear it read by a huge crowd. King David calls, let the peoples praise you, O God. And this huge crowd responds, let all the peoples praise you. He sings, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. And the people shout back louder still, let all the peoples praise you. This combination of all the peoples praising and the nations being glad and singing for joy brings not just a smile, but a bit of a grin to my face. 
because the song that pops into my mind is one by Hoyt Ashton, sung by Three Dog Night. Talk about all being glad and singing for joy. In that song, a bullfrog named Jeremiah is not discriminated against, but leads the praise. Do you hear it? Do you remember? Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Was a good friend of mine. Never understood a single word that he said, but I helped him drink his wine singing joy to the world. All the boys and girls, you can join me. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me, I said, sing it again. Joy to the world. All the girls and boys and girls, I'm sorry. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. I've read all the comments about the meaning of these words. I was hoping they would write the whole sermon, but they just said that Hoyt Ashton made up the chorus and loved it and just did nonsense words around it to hold it as a place marker, so... Didn't help a whole lot. But to me, it epitomizes the acceptance of all. It's like the hymn, Earth and All Stars, in which the stars and planets, engines and steel, hail and wind and rain, all react to the wonders God has done by praising the Almighty. In Ashton's song, a bullfrog is a friend and not an other, and joins in singing joy to the world along with the fish in the deep blue sea. All of creation shares what it has received from the Creator and uses its gifts to praise God, producing the most exuberant expression of joy that I know. The Romans lesson talks about this acceptance, welcoming business of all from the other side. It asks, who does God reject? Remember that Paul wrote this letter, the Roman, to the Romans, after Jesus' death and resurrection, after Jesus had revealed the truth of God's grace for all, revealed that to the world. Where before the Hebrew people knew only themselves to be the chosen, now it's all different. Everybody's chosen. Everyone is called. All are claimed by God as his children. So Paul answers this question. Does the welcoming of all mean that the presumed insiders, the Jews, are now rejected? And the answer is no. No one is turned away. Not the Jews. No one. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience. Isn't that a strange way to say it? So that he may be merciful to all. And finally, in Matthew's good news, Jesus heals the daughter of the Canaanite woman. Talk about being an outsider, one whom Jesus did not come to serve, as he says. She's a Canaanite. That's how people would have said that then, Canaanite. Talk about your human stereotyping. Even Jesus, fully human yet fully divine, succumbs at first to the old rules, this tribalism, teams. Labeling her an outsider, referring to her with belittling, cruel terms. Yet the Lord of love hears something in her plea when she says, yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And here, at this moment, Jesus sees things differently, accepts her, heals her daughter, and calls her faith great. Now, we can speculate forever on what happened here. His human nature gave way to his divine self. He heard her when she said that the father is her master too, 
Maybe he saw her with new eyes. Maybe he was teaching us a lesson. Whatever it was, he showed us the, a new way, the way that leads us to seeing one another as no better and no worse than ourselves. Regardless of race, gender, politics, a way not guided by fear, but God's grace, a way not wrapped in hate, but love and joy. As the prayer of the day summed up, and thank you for pointing it out, Kathy, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us to love the world with constancy and compassion that your name may be known throughout the earth. Yes, God's intention is clear. We all are welcome, but how? How do we go about remaking ourselves into accepting, welcoming, non-dividers, uniters? How can we move ourselves into the world where we unite with all in singing joy to the world? I think only God can do it. We ask forgiveness. We pray for compassion. We seek God's grace, and in its strength, we serve one another, even the ones we dislike so very much. And the exciting part is that in the sharing and in the confessing of our inability to free ourselves, God does free us. And then, living hand in hand, with our brothers and sisters of all political persuasions and all races, we come to know the gifts each brings. We come to find what we share, how we are alike, and appreciate our individuality. We see those bits as gifts from God, gifts we all need, and in the sharing, we find joy. The bottom line is that there is such great joy in the Lord, joy because all are welcome, joy because God created all things good, joy because God's love is for all, even for the fishes in the deep blue sea, joy to you and me. So may we go forth from here in that joy to love one another, accept and welcome all, to be the people of God who invite all, Welcome all to share this joyful life with us. Amen. Our sermon hymn today says this much better than I can. So I invite you to listen to the poetry of a hymn called, I can't pronounce it in Spanish, maybe some of you can, La Paz del Señor, The Peace of the Lord, and I will not speak it in Spanish. The peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the peace of the risen Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord is for you and for me and also for all of God's children. The peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the peace of the risen Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord is among us right now. So open yourselves to receive it. The peace of the Lord is among us right now, so open yourselves to receive it. The peace of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the peace of the risen Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord kept within cannot live. So open yourselves now to share it. The peace of the Lord kept within cannot live. So open yourselves now to share it.
Oh, please stand. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soils stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy. Let your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our villages, cities, and town, and for those who need your healing, especially those we now name aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us also with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Into your hands, gracious Lord, we lift up all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us greet one another with God's peace. Please be seated as we spend some time reflecting on today's message, on today's gospel and lessons and on our dedication to moving forward doing God's will. <laughs> Let us stand. We'll <clears throat> speak our canticle together, the first uh, paragraph or stanza, the second, and then the first again, remembering that God's word is our guide. Thy word 
is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me, and nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, just a very few announcements. Um, I have updates. Uh, Vic is doing well? Coming along, she's saying. She's holding to coming along. Vic is coming along. He is in Kessler and West Orange. Um, Tom Tarot is back home after spending some time in the hospital and, uh, and doing, feeling some better. Rudy Wilderman, who had reverse shoulder surgery, strangest thing I ever heard, um, is up at their farm in um, upstate New York in the presence of his son's recruit, recruiting, not recruiting. Um, that's the word. Thank you. Recuperating. Excellent. See, I don't even need to talk. You guys just know what I'm thinking. That's great. Are there other announcements? Um, we're hoping we'll be outside next week. Thank you for uh, going with the flow today. Um, I hope the service was meaningful for you. And uh, I still, well, we're going to, I'm going to do a blessing and then we're going to do the last hymn. There are three people that I gave sheets to to read some of the verses for us, um, but I didn't give out a last one. Is there anyone who will do the fourth verse? Anybody feel so inclined? There, oh, Paula never wants to do things at the last minute. <laughs> Yay, Paula. It's flexible, it's flexible <laughs> There we go. Okay. Well, let us receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. So those who are reading can come up and be socially distanced. And uh, when uh, Cindy finishes her verse, why the next reader will come up on. The Spirit sends us for... Let's, let's wait for just a second, Cindy, until the music okay. Maybe I didn't give her this music. Did I not? Can't see what her Sydney is. So. Sydney, go. <laughs> the Spirit sends us forth to serve. We go in Jesus' name to bring glad tidings to the poor. 
God's favor to proclaim. We go to comfort those who mourn and set the burden free, where hope is dim to share a dream and help the blind to see. We go to be the hands of Christ, to scatter joy like seed, and all our days to cherish life, to do the loving deed. Then let us go to serve in peace, the gospel to proclaim. God's spirit has empowered us. We go in Jesus' name. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.